It's the dictionary. 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 Hello, word nerds. What's going on with you? Welcome to this show called The Dictionary, hosted by me, Spencer. Hi, everybody. What's up? Hey. Uh, I am recording this on April 26th, 7.32 a.m. The first word in this episode is expatriate. Yes, expatriate. First form, E X P A. T-R-I-A-T-E. It is a verb from 1768. We are starting with transitive. Number one, the synonyms are banish and exile. You want to get them away. You are going to expatriate them. We'll talk more about that, I guess. Um, because, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk more a little bit. So, this is the action. I didn't realize that you could use this as a verb to get rid of people. Uh, Napoleon was expatriated. Two, to withdraw oneself from residence in or allegiance to one's native country. So, this is where you are doing this action to yourself. You are ex patriating yourself from your native country you want to leave for some reason you're like i don't like the work here i don't like the politics here i don't like a lot of stuff that's going on i prefer that country over there that one looks nice that one smells nice let's go see what that country has for me um yeah now we have intransitive which is to leave one's native country to live elsewhere, also to renounce allegiance to one's native country. Ooh, this is this is the extreme level. You're like, I don't feel comfortable in that country. I renounce being a resident of that land, that country. For the rest of my life, I am expatriating myself. Now, I still, it's the intransitive and transitive is kind of weird when you're doing this to yourself. Intransitive is like, I'm leaving. But the transitive is to withdraw yourself. But it's the same thing. It's the same action. And I don't understand why Why do we have both of them when somebody is doing it to themselves in both contexts. Hmm. Okay. Uh, expatriate or expatriate is a noun. And expatriate... What is this? expatriation yeah expatriation uh, that is a noun this word is from the middle latin verb expatriare which means to leave one's own country and that is from the ex prefix plus patria which means native country and uh, that is the feminine of patrius interesting interesting that it's well so patrius means of a father and so it's like your fatherland and so i'm it's interesting that it became patria which is your native country it became the feminine version of a masculine word which is weird um it's from pater or pater which means father and there's more of the word father of course uh, so yeah, it's your your ex. You're taking yourself out of the the native country, the fatherland, and uh, that's what it is. And so, if you look at the previous episode, we had expat, the shortened version of expatriate, which is, um, I guess. So so that okay. So expat is an expatriate person. Or ex an expatriate is a synonym, and our next word, oh, got sound, do sound effect, come on, do sound effect. There we go. Uh, the next word is expatriate or expatriate. Didn't realize you could have the eight sound on there. Uh, this is the second form, and it is an adjective from 1812. So I guess. The expat word, which is a noun, 
the synonym is the adjective because no, that's kind of odd because we don't have a noun entry here. But anyway, uh, it's just living in a foreign land. If you are expatriate or expatriate or are an expat or an expatriate, you're living in a foreign land. The one that you were not born in, but maybe that's the one that you want to spend the rest of your life. So you are, it's your new, your new land. Good job. What was my sound? I don't know. The next word is expatriatism. Expatriatism. This is a noun from 1937. The fact or state of being an expatriate. The fact or state. You're in a state of being an expatriate. So you have expatriatism, which is, it's like, so it's it's the opposite of patriotism. You're, you don't have patriotism for the land that you lived in, but it's not like you, you, you can be an expat and leave and live somewhere else, but still feel okay about your country before. It's just that you left for for work or life or something, but it's the, I, yeah, I'm, I'm just reading into things too much. <laughs> Next is expect, expect, I expect you to listen very closely. This is a verb from 1560, starting with intransitive. Number one is archaic. The synonyms are wait and stay. Hmm. Wait, stay. Expect. So you're, if you're telling your dog to stay, you could have in the long time ago say expect. <laughs> expect. <laughs> oh, it's so archaic. <laughs> Number two is to look forward. To look forward. Not backward. Forward. Three is to be pregnant and also await the birth of one's child. This is used in progressive tenses, as in, she's expecting next month. Um, she's expecting. She is expecting to meet her child at some point in the future when it is grown enough that it is ready to come out of the womb. Hmm, to be pregnant, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to expect. Are you expecting... Nope, it's just my belly. I just ate a lot of food. Okay, now we have transitive. Number one is also archaic, again. And the synonym is await. And I, I don't know how to use that in, a, in an old archaic sentence. Number two, to anticipate or look forward to the coming or occurrence of. To the coming of a thing, to the occurrence of a thing, you are looking forward to a thing, as in, we expect them any minute now. We've been waiting. Any minute now, they're going to come. Uh, there's that Beatles song. I think it's Blue Jay Way. And it was George Harrison literally wrote this song as he was waiting for his friends to arrive um, to come over and hang out at his house. He was expecting them any minute now. And he just started, I, maybe they were late. And he just started playing the song on the piano or something. And he wrote this song. I guess, did he live on Blue Jay Way? I think that was the song title. Um, also is in, expected a telephone call. I'm expecting a telephone call. Not many these days. These days I'm like, I'd rather not talk on the phone. Texting's fine. Um, I am expecting that this episode will end in about 15, 20 minutes. Um, next, number three, the synonyms are suppose and think. I'm thinking, I'm expecting, hmm. Number four, A, to consider probable or certain, as in expect to be forgiven. To consider probable or certain, hmm. Couldn't this also just be like I'm looking forward in the future to be forgiven instead of to I I consider it's probable probably this thing is going to happen it's it's part hmm 
yeah, I don't, I don't know. There's another example though. Expect that things will improve. Probably, I'm pretty sure they're gonna improve. So I expect that they will improve. Again, it's still like looking forward to a thing. But I guess it's different. It's, it's I know this thing is going to happen. I know that baby's going to pop out. So I'm expecting it. Um, opposed to, I think this thing is going to happen. You don't know for sure, but you, you're pretty sure it's going to happen. I guess that would be the difference. Um, 4C is to, to what? <laughs> Uh, to, oh wait, did I skip for B? I think I did. Yes, for B. To, cons to consider reasonable, due, or necessary. You're considering something reasonable, due, like it's due, like the library book is due, um, or necessary, as in expected hard work from the students. I expect you to do these things. Um, if I'm teaching you, I expect you to put in some effort as well can't just be one-sided. You got to do your homework. For C, to consider bound in duty or obligated, as in they expect you to pay your bills. Yep, to be a normal person, a normal citizen in a society, you got to pay your bills and stuff. Got to have a job, make money, have money, somehow get that money, and then pay those bills. Bills, bills, bills. To consider bound, you are bound in duty. Yep, expected. I am expected to... <sighs> what am I expected to do? I'm expected to, yeah, pay the bills, clean, cook, stuff. Uh, what else? What else we got to say? Expectable is an adjective. Expectably is an adverb. Expectedly is an adverb. Uh, and expectedness is a noun. This word is from the Latin verb expectare, expectare, which means to look forward to, which is from the X prefix plus spectare, which means to look at, because you're using your, your spectacles to look at things. Uh, that is from specare, which means to look. And there's more at the word spy. I spy with my little eyes that are getting worse because I'm getting old. Uh, okay. So, so spectare is to look at a thing, to just to look, just in general, you're looking. And then spectare is to look at a thing specifically. I'm looking at, I'm looking at this f camera lens that I have here. Um, but then you put the X prefix and it becomes... You're looking forward to a thing. You're looking so far in the future with that X prefix. It's like it's outside of this region. It's past that. Looking forward to it. What am I looking forward to? Ah, tonight I'm looking forward to hanging out with my family and watching three key episodes of Twin Peaks with my family because... Uh, with, I think I mentioned this before, my sister and her partner and my niece um, have been watching Twin Peaks and they are, I don't know, 14 episodes in and we said, we ish, and we said, you got to watch these three episodes with us, very important episodes. And uh, and so they're, they're caught up to that point and we're going to watch tonight and it's very exciting. I'm, I'm expecting it. Uh, we have synonym information for expect. Expect, hope, and look mean to await some occurrence or outcome. Expect implies a high degree of certainty and usually involves the idea of preparing or envisioning. So it's very likely this thing is going to happen and we're preparing for it. As in, expects to be finished by Tuesday. Good. Get that thing, get that report on my desk Wednesday morning. Hope implies little certainty, but suggests confidence or assurance in the possibility that what one desires or longs for will happen. I want this thing to happen. I hope it will happen. It's not necessarily going to happen. It's less certainty than expect, but it could happen. 
as in hopes to find a job soon. Hopes to find a job soon. I have lots of hopes. Hopes and dreams and hoop dreams. Look, um, it says with the word to implies assurance that expectations will be fulfilled. As in looks to a tidy profit from the sale. Implies assurance that expectations will be filled. Looks to a tidy profit from the sale. That's, I, this is not how I talk. I don't use words this way. It looks to a tidy profit from the sale. It's like you're, you're, you're thinking this is going to happen. Implies assurance that expectations will be fulfilled. You think that the, that the sale will be fulfilled, so you'll get a tiny profit. Ah, and there's more. When you use it with the word for... It implies less assurance and suggests an attitude of expectancy and watchfulness, as in, looks for rain when the wind shifts to the northeast. So uh, it's, it's less likely that it will happen, I guess. Less solid. Hmm. I mean, looks for rain. I guess I would use that one more. I'm looking for something. Looks too... Eh. I don't think I used that one. Okay, let's move on. Brrr. Expectance. This is a noun from 1603. The synonym is expectancy, which is brrr. the next word. Noun from 1600. Expectancy. Just three years before expectance. Number 1A. The act, action, or state of expecting. As in, the strange expectancy that getting on any train gives us, that getting, the strange expectancy that getting on any train gives us. That is a quote from John Updike. So it is the act, action, or state of expecting. We are expecting something. We are in a state of expectancy. Um, and I'm, so I'm trying to figure out this quote. The strange expectancy that getting on any train gives us. So I guess it's just the idea of when you get on a train, you are just expecting something. You're expecting a fun trip. You're expecting a train ride. You're expecting to see the land in a different way than a plane would. Uh, okay, 1B is the state of being expected. So uh, George Harrison's friends were in a state of expectancy because he was expecting them as in, occurs with an expectancy slightly greater than usual. I don't understand these examples sometimes. Occurs with an expectancy slightly greater than usual. You're more, whatever. 2A, something expected, as in, their belief led to an expectancy. Just let... Who uses this, this word? Who uses it? Uh, it's just something that is expected. Their belief led to an expectancy. They believed something would happen, and then it had happened. Then it happened. To be. The expected amount... Um, the expected amount based on statistical probability, and we're maybe talking about the number of years of life. So the example is life expectancy. This is the only context that I use ever, I, I'm familiar with. Life expectancy is the expected amount based on statistical probability. All You take all the numbers, all the people, and when they die, and you, you average it out for a population in certain countries, they have different life expectancies. And... Um, well, let, let's let's look. Let's look. What is the life expectancy in? Uh, ooh, there's a life expectancy calculator. Should we do this? Um, but what I really wanted to know is uh, the life expectancy in the U.S. and I believe Japan has the highest. Um, hmm. Okay, the U.S. is. Currently, 76.33 years. It seems low, but also you have to factor in 
there's a lot of people who die young. Accidents, diseases, and there's a lot of people who live into their 90s. Um, three of my grandparents lived into their 90s. Um, two of them were, well, one of them just passed in January. He was, um, he was 90. Hold on. Let's do the math. <laughs> he was born in 26. So he was, and this is 24. So he was 97 and a half. I don't know. Okay. Whatever. He was old. And my other grandpa died, um, uh, six, eight, six, eight months before that. And I think he was almost 98. And so Mexico is 70.21 years. The UK is 80, 80.7 80 years. Wow. Do we have more, more information? Uh, this is a big old chart. I don't want that. But now do, and of course they, they say males, uh, die, die younger, uh, than, than, uh, women for some reason, probably because they're doing stupid activities. I don't know. Let's see. Well, and of course, as time goes on with medical things and being people being healthy, the life expectancy goes on. So like I'm 43 right now, but by the time that I get into my seventies, the life expectancy could be 80. Um, let's see. At this point, life expectancy for me is estimated total years, 81.7. I don't understand what, it, yes, 81.7. But when I'm at 62, um, it's 84.8. At 67, it's 86. So wait, are they saying that when I'm age 70, that the life expectancy will be 86.9? Hmm, interesting. Your normal or full retirement age, okay. Hmm, but I think... I think that my life expectancy based on my genes and my healthiness, because I'm the I'm the pinnacle of healthiness, clearly. My I think I think my life expectancy is over a hundred. Okay, we gotta move on. The next word is expectant. First form adjective from the 14th century. One. Characterized by expectation. Two. Expecting the birth of a child, as in expectant mothers. You are describing the mothers as expecting there will be a baby in their future, and it's going to cry and poop and pee and sleep and want food and need you so much. Expectantly is an adverb. We're just waiting for the baby expectantly. <laughs> The second form of expectant is a noun from 1609. One who is looking forward to something, anything, anybody who's looking forward to something is an expectant. Uh, today is Friday, so I am, I am an expectant of the weekend. <sighs> Expectation, noun from 1540. Number one, the act or state of expecting. And the synonym is anticipation. As in, in expectation of what would happen. Who? I can't wait to find out what's going to happen. I'm in a state of expectation. Anticipation. Number two, A. Is something expected? Hmm, something expected. As in, not up to expectations. Something expected. It's not up to expectations. It hasn't. It. It's not what we. It's not what we expected. It's not up to our expectations. Also, is in expectations for an economic recovery. We so hope that there will be a recovery economically. Who knows? Two B is basis for expecting. And the synonym is assurance, as in, they have every expectation of success. Every expectation of success. They feel so confident in their skills that they are going to win the tournament. They're going to run the race. That's it. 2C, prospects of inheritance. Uh, this is usually used in plural, expectations. So prospects of inheritance. So is this just the stuff that you expect to get when somebody dies? I don't know. I never heard it used that way. Three, the state of being 
expected. I am expected over at your house soon, so I am in a state of expectation. For A, the synonym is the 2B definition for the word expectancy, which is the expected amount uh, of the st 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 statistical probability for life. Uh, two, where are we? Four, four B, the synonym is expected value, which I assume will be in the next episode, right? Expected. Yep, it will be. So we'll, we'll wait just a little bit. Um, expectational is an adjective and, um, I, yeah, it's all about, uh, being expected. Okay. One more word. <laughs> Expectative, expectative, E X P E C T A T I V E. It's an adjective from the 15th century of relating to or constituting an object of expectation, as in expectative goals. You are describing these things in the future as things that you are expecting. Expectative goals. I'm going to make so many goals in that soccer game. All right. So much stupid chitter chatter today. Let's pick a word of the episode. We had expatriate, expatriate, expatriatism, expect, uh, expectance, expectancy, expectant, expectant, expectation, and expectative. I don't know. What am I going to pick? Maybe, I mean, it's all about, a lot of these were just all about ex expecting. Um, let's do expectancy. Let's do expectancy as the word of the episode. And then my song will go, my life expectancy is over a hundred because I'm going to live a long time. That's how it works. Okay. Uh, I will quickly tell you about a movie that I watched, which is Dune from 1984. Uh, there was a, a suburb of Chicago had it for, for one day, and uh, we went, the early one, the not the new one, the old one, from 1984, directed by David Lynch, sounded like a cluster of a making of a movie, and... Um, what do I want to say about it? I don't know. I've I've talked about Dune before. I'm kind of I'm like, uh, prophecy stories. Why do we need these? Whatever. It's it's 40 years old. Um, anything interesting to say? I mean, the effects are old and weird, but at the time they were probably pretty fancy. And um, it's so white. That's my comment. Too many white people. That's all I got to say. All right. This is the end of the episode. Thank you so much. For this, I expect to see you back tomorrow or whenever the next episode is. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye.